YouTube and welcome to another video. This one, one you've all been waiting for, a van tour. We're in a bright and sunny, at the moment, fingers crossed, Lake District. And what we're gonna do for you today is just give you a van tour. We have been putting it off for a while because the van has always been messy, but we're gonna treat you to a van tour, real life, on the road, how we live. Um, so we're off for a week on the road and this is our van tour. So, VW T6 Transporter. Um, it's a short wheelbase, um, but it provides just enough space for what we want to do. And if I give you a tour of the outside first of all. From the top, we have a direct 4x4 awning. Um, I believe it's a 2.4 metre. Correct me if I'm wrong, Sam. Mm -hmm. 2.4 metre. Um, and that comes out for when it's raining, or if it's sunny and you want a bit of shade. Um, but that is fantastic. We did originally have a shorter one, but we've gone for a larger. Um, and it just provides um, enough enough of a surface area to actually protect you rather than the shorter one we did have which just covered the door. Up the top, which everything is attached to, is uh, a front runner rack. So the direct 4x4 awning is also attached to that. But we have a rack from front runner which has lots of modular um, accessories. So up top we have two wolf pack boxes which we store firewood um, and wash kit in for washing the bikes joined up with a 40 litre i think it's a 40 or 42 litre water tank now with this water tank we connect a hose um, and a works pressure washer which is portable so we can wash the bikes or have a wash um, on the road that has been a game changer originally you'll see later on we had 20 litres of water in in the van just wasn't enough but with this it provides a hell of a lot more water new addition which is attached with the canoe rack um, canoe and kayak rack from front runner as well they were kind enough to send us that to try out you can mount the canoe rack in various different positions and have your canoe mounted sideways um, or you can have it flat as we've done here so we've got them out flat this is a rather large canoe it's for a two-man so suit me and Sam fine we wanted to get rid of the two kikes we were originally um, using which were just a bit of a faff we couldn't record and do near as much well anywhere near as much as what we wanted to do so that's mounted at the top we will get it adjusted with two new seats the seats in there are causing a bit of a problem at the moment with the way we mount it but at the moment it's hanging over quite a bit so we have this on there um, if you move around to the front Sam at the front we have the Osram light bar from Front Runner. We absolutely love this. When you're on the road at night time, as we do quite often, traveling on a Friday night up to Wales and places like that, it just lights up the road like it's daylight. It's just fantastic. With the lights on the van um, alone, you really notice the difference when that is on. So that has been a game changer. And what you can probably see if Sam just holds it over the top is a 100 watt solar panel. That solar panel provides all the power we need to a leisure battery that's adjoined with the front battery in the van, but the leisure battery provides us enough power to be able to charge things when we want, um, run the water pump, run the lighting, run the fridge. And the fridge is a key one because it keeps beer cold. Um, so that's just fantastic. New addition as well, these bad boy all-terrain three tires. Um, in many of the photos you've probably seen, we've had the, the standard wheels on there. We didn't think much of them before about changing them, anything like that. But since these have been on, what a transformation has been. It's just stunning. Um, they all terrain, I think they're called grabbers. They grab onto terrain like it's yeah, no tomorrow. We can get up the little green lanes. Not extreme, but once we, we've got these sidebars on from direct 4x4. And they're great. And they've been great for quite some time. The only reason we're thinking of getting rid of them is because we want a bit more clearance. You can go down the route of having lift, but again, it's a lot of money, a lot of time and effort to get that sorted. So we might just remove these for the time being, just provide a bit more lift um, and clearance for, for getting over rocky terrain. Um, I think that's it for the outside. This window was put in. Sam got a company to put the side window in because it was originally a panel van. So that's been done. Um, yeah, so that, that, that's just nice to have. Open the window, vent it when you're cooking, things like that. Come round to the back. 
I mean, this this is how we're sort of living at the moment. Weather's nice, so we've got our shoes airing outside, kindling, that's my camera bag. This we use for showering, so it just keeps you off the ground when you've got your shoes off and you can shower with that up top. But if I open this up here, it is a mess. It is a mess, but in here is the garage of the van, I suppose. Two, the main thing in here, two high bike, uh, all mountain six electric bikes. These are amazing. If I just remove this, we use simple bungees to keep everything sort of from moving when we're away. Move the trousers. This is first world problems. I mean, we were going to go to a campsite to wash all this sort of stuff, but we just let it dry out and we'll brush it all off. But those are our mountain bike trousers. Life vests for canoeing, um, sun cream, different products and sprays and that up there for bugs and midges, all that sort of stuff. But the, the, the bikes are mounted on, from their forks. Obviously the front wheels are off, fork mounted. These are custom fork mounts that we put in um, and it just works. I know a lot of people struggle to find where to put their bikes um, and things like that and how to mount them because there's, there's various different ways people do it. People have sliding beds that come out and things like that. Um, but these, yeah, they're, they're just, there's little quirks. My bike, which is the, f the furthest front one, we have to let the air out of the tire. Not too much of an issue. We get to a, uh, we get to a, a bike park, we just pump it up and it's as simple as that. If it means we can get, keep them in the back of the van and secure, then brownie points is brilliant. Um, so the handlebar twisted on mine, of course, and then we've got paddles for the canoes in there. We have an inverter in the van, which you can just see in there. We are charging one of the bikes at the moment. The other one is fully charged. We're just charging this one up and I've got my drone battery in there charging. That is, again, that's another game changer. So have an inverter on the road and be able to charge things on 240 volts, like a, a drone and your, and your e-bike. E-bikes have to be charged. If you're on the road and you're remote, how are you gonna charge an e-bike? With an inverter connected to the solar panel. In here, all your bike cleaning kit. So pressure washer hose, works pressure washer in there. Um, we'll link in the description um, all of the different products that we, we've, we're using that we think might be of some value to people. But that's literally all your bike cleaning kit and that just goes away nicely in there. All of this custom made from us. I mean, we're by no means carpenters, but it works for us. We've got this solid box in there with the drawer and we just keep that secure with a little, little latch there. Um, I think that's pretty much it for the inside of the back of the van of the garage area. So we'll leave those doors open and what we'll do, we'll come round to the inside of the van. So, first of all, on the outside of the van here, when camping and remote, you need all your tools and that. So we've got axe for cutting firewood. If anyone comes and disturbs us in the night, just beware, we do have an axe. We did originally have it mounted on a front runner um, mount on the side of the van, but what we realised, and we soon come to the realisation of, is that you've got a weapon on the side of the van when you're parked up places. So even though you can lock it down, it just makes it a little bit, yeah, you question it. So that's mounted inside now, that's for cutting up firewood and all things like that, etc. Brush, you will find yourself constantly brushing stuff in, out of the van. So that is a must have. We have to have a brush in it and, and you'll find it just gets dirty very, very quickly. So brush for cleaning out of the van. Shovel, I'll let you work out what that could be used for. Could be used for digging holes. Two burner gas hob. If I just show you this. So two burner gas hob in there. That is what we use for our cooking. And anything that we want to cook, which should be in an oven, We've got a, a griddle that shuts um, and put that on there and it gets hot very, very quickly in there and can cook things like pizzas when they're folded over into calzones. So that's that. Um, sorry if you can hear the wind, it's, it's blowing up a little bit now, but hopefully the wind socks should be helping. Um, Kiravan swivel seat mount. Now this just, another game changer for us in the van is to be able to open this living area up. So we found ourselves a lot of the time like this a seat there and it was a brick wall a lot of wasted space now we've got this in four bolts um it's all safety rated you undo the four bolts spin it around and then you can come in here put your feet up seat more people and it's just fantastic 
But what we do have in here is all of the items that are lesser used. So this, now we've got an inverter, we don't find any yourself using this anywhere near as much, but just in case, it's a 12 volt, 2 volty um, little inverter thing. Uh, cover for the front of the van, which can be used when it's raining and things like that, or when you don't want people to see in, just gives you a bit of privacy. We haven't been using that because we've been fairly remote on this, this trip, but it's just all cases and things. Um, there's a tow rope in there. Um, we'll, slack we'll, line. Slack line, yeah, you've got a slack line in there for a bit of, a bit of fun. Um, yeah, all, all the things like, um, I think, I think the um, hammocks, I think the hammocks are in the bottom of there somewhere. Um, just things you don't wear any use anywhere near as much as what you you should, but it's always there, easy accessible if you do need them. Um, what can we show at the front? I mean, over here we've got a quad lock. So that quad lock over there is used for just attaching your phone when you're on the road. Quad lock have been kind enough to send us that and the mounts for the the bike actually, so we can put our phones on. Um, that's brilliant. But that's that's pretty much it for the front of the van. Um, if I show you around inside here then, camera gear is always lying around. Um, okay, fridge. So this 12 volt fridge, we find ourselves leaving it on a lot of the time. When we're not on trips and the van's parked up, we will go in the van sort of a week, two weeks later and be like, oh, the fridge is left on. Never drains the battery. It's fantastic. It's really efficient, really, really efficient. Um, Dometic, 12 volt, and literally, Milk, bacon, carrots, cheese, all the things you would expect in a fridge. Not anywhere near as much beer as what there should be in there at the moment, but a decent, decent little fridge. And that just slides away and just locks in like that. Um, so coming around to sort of the, the other food areas, I guess. There's a, a little pantry in here. We just put cups, sugar, coconut milk, Tins of food is all, all shoved at the back there. Um, little plug. My girlfriend makes um, pottery. Um, she makes these little beer mugs. These are fantastic. If you do want these, I'll put the link in the description. But she makes all different designs and they're fantastic. So make sure you go and check that out. Um, yeah, pantry. In here. So this is where we were talking about the, the limited water supply. So we've got the lights actually, which I'll show you in a moment. But 20 litres, 20 litres of water in here, um, 10 litres in each. Once you run out, you switch over to another one, and that's connected to a shore flow pump. So that is that shore flow pump in there. At the moment, you can see I've switched on party lights, and it's, it's flashing like a good one in there. But if we turn those off, those party lights should be white, really, when we need to use them, and it just gives us a little bit more visibility in the dark of, of things, water cupboard um, and things in this. But... This shelving, we wouldn't be at. We wouldn't be able to live without. I mean, we could do with more space, but it does work for us. We've got cleaning stuff. You'll find things to just get put anywhere, anywhere there's space. But there's clean, uh, cleaning stuff up here and odd bits, tissue. Um, in here we have pots, pans, cooking oil, all like cutlery, things like that. And then down here, eggs, potatoes, more tissues, cling film. And then down the very, very bottom, we've got some wastewater um, and a jack. So when we need to jack things up, we have one in there. And there's a cupboard down the bottom here, which is just used for rice and pasta. Just the things that staple, staple foods. Um, yeah, and then we have the bed here. So underneath the bed, we have storage. So we've got all the bags. So Sam's bag for clothing, my bag for clothing, um, wash bags. And then under the back, we have ladder, front runner chairs, which are amazing. Um, the, um, what were these, Sam? These chocks. are, yeah, the chocks. I can't remember the name of them, but they're <laughs> Fat Famia. Yeah. Yeah, Famia chocks. And they just enable us to sort of jack the van up and make it level when we are parked up because nobody wants to be cooking with your pots and pans sliding off. So that levels, levels the van. And then we've got first aid kit. Oh. There you go, my glasses, first aid kit, etc. under there. This bed is mounted in a seating position at the moment, so obviously... Your phone needs a mobile or Wi-Fi connection first. Okay, <laughs> I don't know what that was. Um, so this is mounted in a seating position at the moment with the uh, voided camp blankets. These are amazing. 
Um, they do various different blankets, which can be used as pillows, blankets, or sleeping bags. Um, but we've just got this, which covers up all the pillows and soft stuff underneath. So we've got, um, yeah, sleeping bags, pillows. And then what happens with this? Um, at the moment, lovely seat in position. You can seat three people comfortably on here, another person over there, but you can cram more in if you do want to. But I'll just give you a quick demonstration of how we switch the bed formation. And it is as simple as sliding the bottom out, pulling all of this soft stuff off, and pulling this second mattress down. He says, And there you have your bed position. I sleep with my head that end, top and tail, and Sam with his head this end. We can go off grid for ages at a time. We've got enough water, enough food, enough electricity, and it's just amazing. Being able to sleep two people in there comfortably on the adventures we go on is, is a must. Um, and if you really wanted to, you could probably, oh, look at him go flying through there. Royal Air Force training, amazing. Um, yeah, you could probably sleep a third person across the front if you wanted to. It has been done before, um, but it's, it's not ideal. So if we jump back, oh yes, forgot about that. So the water in there, <laughs> should have really told you that, the water in there is connected to that shore flow pump, but it comes up here to um, this tap and you switch the pump on, water comes out two different modes, turn it off, pump off, and that's just brilliant. We did originally use this for showering outside of the van, but now we've got the um, front runner set up out the back. Um, we use that now, and then this is just for use for washing up and things like that. Um, and then the spice rack up here with all your different spices. Lighting up in the top of the ceiling. Um, these are just some cheap old lights, um, but they provide enough light when it's pitch black and it's just brilliant, but they've got controllers. Um, and then all your power is up on the front of that. So you've got your LEDs, your pump, your party lights, which I showed you light up in, inside, and then you just your power, which comes on and off like that, 12.1 volts. Okay, so, um, yeah, I think, I think that pretty sums, sums it up. Um, I think I've explained everything on the outside um, and everything on the inside. I did forget to mention, and quite a key one, we have our electric, so our ledger battery is mounted underneath this front uh, driver's seat. Um, and if you look down there, we have our fuse um, and CTEC set up. So basically we have a ledger battery um, under the seat with a CTEC charger to the back of it. That connects the ledger battery um, to the solar panel. So it goes, the CTEC is, is there for the, so the smart alternator. So it's van battery to the smart alternator, ledger battery um, with the CTEC charger. Then that goes up to the 100 watt solar panel. Um, so it's always charging and keeping everything topped up. Um, but we wouldn't be without that because it enables us to charge e-bikes charge our phones, charge the drone, charge cameras, which we need to do on the road. Um, all those little bits. So yeah, I will uh, carry on the video now. If you do have any questions, then do let us know. Um, but yeah, that has been the, the tour of our van. You've all been wanting to have a look at it. So yeah, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. All your um, feedback, comments, we, we read them all. And yeah, we, we try and get back to all of our followers. But yeah, we hope you enjoyed that and uh, yeah, Take care, like, follow, comment, subscribe, do all that sort of stuff and click here, here and here where all the other stuff is. And yeah, we'll see you in the next one.